Good afternoon. Everyone grab a cookie. It's like mid-afternoon. You all need a little bit of energy. So uh, my name is Roy Pereira. I'm the CEO and founder of Zoom.ai. We are an automated assistant uh, company for all employees. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about how we built on top of Microsoft Teams. And you're going to hear me for 10 minutes, and then we're going to hear from a real engineer who's going to actually show you some code. Okay. So what we found is that in today's enterprise environments, we have so many applications as employees that we need to use on a daily basis. It gets really monotonous trying to figure out where to go to find the right information and to accomplish these tasks that we need to do. And when we first got our first set of applications, we were hugely improved in our productivity. The problem was when you have 20 on average, you actually become less productive, right? So the solution to this mess is to get your own assistant, of course, right? And nobody has their own assistant anymore. The story was that I was working at a company and the, the only one that had their own assistant was the CEO. We're 600 people. Everyone else was wasting half of their day on these admin tasks on all of these different apps. And so like a good tech person, what did I decide to do? I decided to automate a human, the EA. And this is what we basically built. And so we see the future of work in the same way. We see offloading all of these small, low-value tasks. And the reason why we like Microsoft Teams so much is because we feel like it's the perfect UI to accomplish all of these tasks. The quick and dirty asks of information, of tasks to be done. Just chat. It's a perfect user uh, interface. You don't have to learn it. It's English or, or French or whatever language you want. And we've added in AI, specifically machine learning, to make that intelligent. Because we thought that that was the really missing piece that we've seen before. And so this is it. It's on mobile. It's on desktop. Um, and we put in our own natural language processing and our own machine learning algorithms to make it more intelligent. What we've really built, though, when you look at it, is that we've built the next generation middleware. For those of you that are less young than I am, you don't remember middleware, but it's the middle layer in between the user interface and the back-end office applications. And guess what? We have a new user interface. It's called chat. And there's a big gap in between now, chat, into the other applications that we currently see. And so this is where we build Zoom. So I'm going to do a demo real quick. And I'm going to hopefully make it work. So this is our interface. We've added in a natural language processing technology. We built it specifically to handle chat, thumb typing or on your mobile device or just on your desktop. You don't want to talk too much about it. It has a conversational engine as well that actually understands context, which is really hard to also build in. And what I'm going to show you is meeting scheduling first. We're going to meet with Jesse next week about sales reviews. And what we've inferred is, is this the right Jesse? Yes, because we're monitoring all of the person's conversations. And we're using machine learning to actually understand person's social graph. And so we're going to go ahead and say yes to this. And it's going to go and negotiate with Jesse. Um, because Jesse's actually an employee, it actually has found some convenient times for both of us. But I'm going to want them to decide. And so now our assistant, our automated assistant, like a good human assistant, is going to connect with Jesse and ask, what time is best for you? Here are some good times. And let, let them decide on their own. I'm going to go back and do some work. I'm done. The next thing we're, we're going to show you is meeting insights. So an hour before my meeting with Jesse, it's actually going to tell me this, but I can actually ask at any time. And it's going to go and figure out who Jesse is. It will use the Microsoft Graph API, but it'll also use five other different APIs and our own proprietary algorithm that goes through it in a very unique way to figure out information about them. And this is not coming in from LinkedIn, all those LinkedIn lawyers in the audience. That's a no-no. Um, 
And so this is very important because when you're meeting external people and you don't know who they are, you're going to waste a ton of time talking to them, um, so, sorry, Googling them right before your meeting. There's this picture. All right, Jesse, go away, Jesse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next thing we're going to show you is information discovery within the enterprise. One of the biggest issues is figuring out the knowledge that your company knows and who to ask or where to get it. And so chat is the singular user interface that everyone is on and that we don't want to switch from, right? Context switching hurts. So in this case, we're asking about dividends. Whoa, that's very boring. But there's so many types of dividends. So it's a demo of getting down to the right question if you were an accounting firm, for example, uh, as well as search. Search is the same problem. Where do I find something? Uh, we have so many cloud uh, storage places right now, the drives, the SharePoints, and so forth. We actually don't know where things are anymore, and it takes us time. So very quickly, through chat, we can find information super, super fast. And the last, the last one that we'll show you before we get to code is we're going to generate a document, which is the other thing that we do a lot within the enterprise. We have a bunch of these standard documents that we all have to use. Sometimes it's an NDA, an order form, an employee contract, anything like that that's standard that's from the corporation, we can actually put into the system and have the assistant ask us questions and then fill in the answers and then generate the document, convert it to PDF, send it to DocuSign, and then send it off to the person. So something that would take normally several minutes, maybe an hour to figure out who can help us with this, we can now self-serve all within that one UI chat uh, without having to bother anyone. So that's the demo, uh, canned demo. But the internet's not so good, so we decided to do a video of it. Uh, the next is Faisal, who is our senior engineer. Uh, he's going to give you a rundown of how we actually built in support for Teams. And as you saw in one of the previous slides, we support 17 different chat platforms, including Skype, Skype for Business, and Microsoft Teams. And Microsoft Teams is actually our number one chat platform across all of our enterprise customers. So, Faisal? Testing. Can everyone hear me? Great. Uh, clicker. All right, so has anyone here used the bot framework already? OK, one person, two people. So the bot framework is essentially enables you to tap into a bunch of messengers, Skype for Business, Skype, Microsoft Teams. And that's what we use. And the bot framework really makes it easy to integrate into an existing infrastructure. Right? As you saw, we have a large architecture. And we don't want to modify it just to add another messenger. And Bot Framework really makes it simple. It just uses a RESTify API and uses webhooks. So if you can just set that up, you got Bot Framework running. And with Bot Framework, it also enables you to talk to Microsoft Teams. And Zoom.ai uses Microsoft Teams to basically give it the best experience possible. And we use five of these features in Microsoft Teams. We use tabs, proactive messaging, deep linking, cards, and message prompts. Tabs are essentially tabs that live inside Microsoft Teams, and they enable Zoom to visually show rich information to complement the conversation. Not everything is good for a conversation. For example, if you want to see a dashboard of data, you don't want to display that in a conversation. And so you can easily look at a tab and get an insight on what's happening in your Zoom.ai account. Building tabs is actually very easy. It's just a manifest entry. And if you've already built web apps in the past, it's just creating either an Angular JS app, React. It doesn't matter. It could be a static HTML page. You just declare that HTML page in your manifest, and you integrate with the Microsoft Teams.js library. This library enables you to talk to Teams and vice versa. So Teams can invoke tabs, and tabs can invoke Teams. The next thing that we use in Teams is a powerful feature called proactive messaging. This feature is very powerful, and you have to use it with caution. Because the problem that it solves is, once you install a bot on your team's tenant, 
not all your coworkers know that a bot exists. And so what proactive messaging does is it not only sends out a message in the general channel, but also sends out a message. You can get it to send a message to each and every single user inside of Microsoft Teams uh, and saying, hi, you know, I just got installed. You can use me. This is all, these are my features. So it's a great way to get your value prop out there. Again, you have to use this with care because you don't want to spam and get your bot uninstalled. The way to use this is easy. Inside a bot framework, there's a conversation update uh, event that you just listen to. And inside of the event, you get a handle to the Teams chat connector, which is the connector that exposes your application to Microsoft Teams. And using that interface, you can make a call to fetch members, which basically gets all the members inside of Teams. And once you have members inside of Teams, you can loop through them and get more information on them, send a message out, check if they're already on your system, and a variety of other things. Here's a more detailed example of us actually fetching the members. All right. The next is deep linking. And deep linking is a very simple but powerful feature. Uh, here's an example of upgrading your account. You don't want to build an entire credit card processing system inside a chat. You know, there's already tons of good interfaces out there for that, good libraries. And the last thing you want to do is reinvent the wheel. And so what deep linking allows you to do is go to the tab that you previously created with the click of a button. So here you click Settings, and then you would automatically go to, into a Settings tab where you're able to actually upgrade your account and handle all that. Deep linking is very simple. It uses a simple URL format uh, at the bottom there, teams.microsoft/entity, and you give it your tab ID. By doing that, you automatically jump to the correct tab, and you can even in deep link inside of a tab to a correct specific location on a web page. Next is Cards. Cards basically enable Zoom.ai to create rich visual experiences inside of chat. So tabs lets us create it outside of the chat. Cards lets us create it inside of chat. So instead of overloading the user with a lot of text, we can format that text really nicely and add rich buttons. Here you have an example of create a meeting. You can see that we've added yes and no buttons at the bottom. We've created a header called create meeting so the user understands exactly what's happening versus reading a paragraph trying to understand what Vot just said. You can create a uh, card by using a hero card. And this is a long example, but essentially you're just creating a, a hero card using the builder pattern and assigning a lot of fields to it. So you can assign a title, a description, an image, uh, the buttons you want to use, et cetera, et cetera. Next, the, one of the hardest problems that bots have is feature discovery. You know, you install a bot and you have no idea what a bot can do. And so either you can sit there reading the documentation or you can follow along the bot tutorial, which frankly not a lot of people have time for, or you can use a powerful feature inside Microsoft Teams called message prompts. And message prompts are essentially, as you start typing a message inside the input box, you get a list of what the bot can do. Here in this example, it, we show that you can use meetings. Uh, what are my meetings tomorrow? Who is? Help? remind me, and you can actually start scrolling and getting a list of all the other features, like document generation, knowledge base, and et cetera, et cetera. Creating message prompts, again, is very simple. You just go into the manifest for Microsoft Teams and add in a bunch of commands. One thing that we learned from building Microsoft Teams is a lot of these powerful features are very easy to build. They don't take us a lot of time. They're very powerful, and it's very simple to use them. And Essentially, what we've learned is Zoom.ai works best in Microsoft Teams out of all our messaging platforms because of all these five features. Thank you. Any questions? Sorry? Um, so the question is, is this a licensed or free? Um, so we do have a free version. You can go to uh, zoom.ai, get started, and uh, sign in with your Microsoft Office 365 or other accounts and uh, test it. Um, there are some limitations on it, but you can test almost every feature on it. And if you wanted to upgrade, there's an upgrade path, uh, both for yourself as well as your company as well. Your question. The question is, can you customize it? There's quite a lot of customization features. There's a lot more on the corporate plan. So as an enterprise, you have 
um, a ton of customization options in terms of what it sounds like, how it interfaces with people that you want to meet, and so forth. One thing you don't have to do, though, is actually train the system with NLP. So it's pre-trained with NLP. All the phrasing, all the uh, data is already trained. So it will understand all of the intents and all of the, um, the phrases that you can use on, on the system. So uh, the question to the training is, so we don't have to maintain our own Lewis model? No, the, the question, question is you don't have to use your own Lewis model. So um, we've actually built our own NLP technology. We actually don't use Lewis. Uh, not that Lewis is bad, it's great. It's just that we needed a very specific NLP for chat uh, in, our, in our situation. And so we've pre-trained it. We've uh, changed it multiple times so that it works with all of our intents perfectly, right out of the gate. And it learns as you're typing in uh, inside of your enterprise. So if your users inside the, the enterprise are talking it a little differently, it'll actually learn itself over time. Thank you.